Hey guys, how are you? So somebody asked me about taking a job doing Drupal work. So Drupal, if you don't know, or Drupal, is the second most popular content management system out there, second to WordPress. Drupal is something you would use on larger projects where you might have many, many contributors. You may want to style the site in different styles, depending on subsections in, in your site. Although you can do that with WordPress nowadays. Generally speaking, Drupal is for larger, more complex sites where you have a lot of content, a lot of contributors. And WordPress is more for smaller type of projects. Although very huge sites do run on WordPress. Don't get me wrong there. Anyway, that aside, so somebody who, uh, if I recall, because I get a lot of emails, so but I believe this person learned the web stack with me. And they got their first job fairly quickly, but they're doing Drupal work. Their major concern about doing the Drupal work is they're wondering if they're going to be working into uh, outdating themselves, working in a technology stack, Drupal, and uh, that uh, will become outdated and they'll, they'll work their way out of the market in terms of skills. A short answer, no. Uh, why? Because, first of all, Drupal is not going to go away for a long, long time. Uh, B, any type of development that you do adds more to your resume. See, one of the main things that you have to do as a developer is you have to uh, build up a reputation, not just a developer, any type of professional. Having a reputation is huge, uh, and you build a reputation you build uh, credibility by doing real things in the real world. So you learning to work with Drupal, writing code to fork Drupal, writing plugins, or just managing Drupal, installing, configuring, this kind of stuff, this can only help because it's showing you're building your resume. You're adding some credibility to you as an individual. The two most valuable assets, I believe, going forward is not real estate, is uh, not stocks, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, number one, your skill sets. So the more you learn, the more you earn, something I always tell people. And number two is your reputation. Your reputation is built through work experience, project experience, and you want to show that in, uh, you can either show that through a, a website that you built for yourself where you show all the things that you've done, maybe contributions to GitHub, uh, commentary on things that you're doing, in terms of technical commentary in terms of what you're doing on Twitter or Instagram or, or uh, Facebook, YouTube perhaps. Um, these uh, efforts on your part to expand your reputation can only help. Another thing you could do is uh, get get some certifications maybe a little bit. That could help. You know, don't, don't fool yourself. The more you can... Uh, pad your resume, if you will, the more that you can show that you're a legitimate professional, no matter what the field is, we're talking development and design, web design, web development, programming here, the more you can show that, the more you can buttress your reputation through work experience, which is the most important, and the other things I just mentioned, the better off you're going to be. So if this person who's brand new to the whole space, the whole web development, web design space, finds themselves in a Drupal job, which I'm not surprised because despite what all the young nerdlings will tell you, there's a tremendous amount of work in older technologies like Drupal, like WordPress, like uh, Java, like uh, PHP, like uh, Ruby, like Python, although Ruby is less, it's less, it's less. Now, all, all joking aside, the thing that I've noticed over the last 20 years of uh, being in the tech space, being involved in the tech space, I think, well, more specifically, in the last, I say, seven years to 10 years, eh, maybe seven years, hard to say, things have really stabilized. You know, any new industry goes through these radical changes in the first 10, 20 years, like big changes in, in the way things work and how, as, the, as the industry figures itself out. Technology changes quick, working practice changes quick. And we saw that, especially like in the 90s, oof, in the early 2000s, massive changes. But 
I think uh, we, we're seeing a settling of this now in a big way. It's like it was like massive development, massive development, massive development, massive development. And the curve is really smoothing, flattening out, which means the changes are not nearly as radical anymore. And so, for example, in the web stack, I found that client side tech is pretty pretty stable yes we went from jquery to going into react or maybe view there's some big differences there but you know we've we have, we have angular we, we, we went from a very uh hacky in two early 2000s we went from a very hacky uh, trying to get our web browsers to work with XHTML and hacked CSS to try to get CSS-based layouts working to what we have now, which are very stable frameworks, few big ones to choose from. We have Bootstrap. We have now uh, CSS Grid and Flexbox. It's really, really stable now. It's not the wild west of coding that it used to be. It's much easier now to produce uh, software than it was 10 years ago, or especially 15, 20 years ago. And you see that on the mobile uh, front as well. We see how, you know, in iOS world, it went from using Objective-C, which is a pretty, you know, clunky language relative to modern languages. And now everybody works with Swift, which is a very cool fast modern language for ios and now we're seeing the saving in the android world where now we're seeing kotlin the rise of kotlin i believe that kotlin is going to become more and more important because it's just a lighter nimbler language than java which allows you to still have the advantages of java hey the best of both worlds so why not use kotlin Anyway, and you see it even in mobile, you see the maturing of the multi-platform abstraction frameworks like PhoneGap or uh, I think Xamarin for the C-sharp guys. I think Flutter, I think Flutter is something to look at. There's, of course, React Native you can look at as well. But I think uh, Flutter is something to really pay attention to. From what I've seen, you know, 1.0 just came out. The technology stack, the, the, the rate of change has really, really, I think, slowed down in my humble opinion. I, I, I don't see the radical changes yet. you got new things that come out, but they're not radically different anymore. The last biggest change, in my opinion, and it's not really such a huge change, but it is in a way, was when they went from XHTML, which I was always against. There's old articles. I was always against XHTML. And they went to HTML5. And the reason I was against XHTML, by the way, was because it, XHTML, if you don't know, it was, uh, it was XML formed to act like HTML, but it was never HTML. And I never liked it because it just made things unnecessarily difficult to get the work done, number one. Number two, Microsoft at that time was, the, was one of the dominant browsers or the dominant browser when HTML was all the rage. They would never support XHTML as a uh, as HTML. They would always render it as XML. So anyway, I'm going down a nerd rabbit hole. Bottom line is XHTML, the shift from XHTML to HTML5 was the last real major shift, if you're going to say that, in the web stack, which I think is the most important stack. And ever since about 2012 with HTML5 and CSS3 taking over, and the browsers basically all jumping on that in, in a big way, meaning that most of the people using most, most browsers being used rather in support of this stuff. That was it. That was a big change. You know, after 2.12 with the web stack, you're pretty, pretty stable. Uh, some peripheral things here and there, like, you know, like uh, the grid is now almost 100% covered out there. Although, you know, it might be, depending on your audience, maybe five or 10% of the browsers being used won't support, uh, I think it's Flexbox and Grid. But anyway, the point is, is that things have really stabilized, which is good, which is good. So going back, finally, this whole thing about, should you take the Drupal job? Yes, it's your first job. Dude, you got to learn a lot. Whether you're writing code for Drupal or WordPress or, or you're writing Node.js, you're, you're still learning. You're still learning. You're still developing chops. And at the end of the day, Node's cool, but uh, it's not everything. 
right? For every node-based application out there, there's probably 10,000 WordPress or 100,000 WordPress out there, probably 5,000 Drupal's out there. I'm not making any qualitative judgment vis-a-vis -vis Node and WordPress. I'm not claiming Node's not as good as WordPress. They're totally different beasts in many respects, but don't get caught up in this language stuff. I talk about this all the time, reoccurring message. By the way, in the next video, I'm gonna look at some really cool statistics with regards to language use with the big boys, but we'll get into that then. All right, I hope you found this vlog interesting. I'm gonna head out, hit to, hit to the gym, hit the gym. If you're a nerd and you're looking at the nerd lifestyle, my high, highly, I highly recommend that you hit the gym. You hit the gym, you exercise on a regular basis. You got to consider daily exercise as important as anything else you do in life because without a healthy body, your mind is impaired and uh, it's not a good thing. I know some people who are uh, older than me, very, 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 very wealthy, unhealthy, and I would imagine they would give away all their money if they could have a healthier body. I'd rather be uh, sick and poor than rich and sick. But well, Hold on, excuse me. <laughs> I'd rather be poor and healthy than rich and sick. I'd rather be poor and healthy than rich and sick. But if you, uh, you know, you do what I suggest, you could be both. You could have the best of both worlds. There we go. I just want to give a quick shout out to Alex. This is the dude has been creating the nice looking thumbnails on the channel that you've been seeing lately. Uh, he's been great to work with. I've been working with him for about a month now. So he, uh, he works quick, communicates well, puts out the thumbnails. So if you're looking to get some design work done, you may want to give Alex a, uh, well, a DM. I was going to say give him a call, but that might, might not be feasible. But anyway, yeah, give him a DM and uh, all right, ciao guys.